The following morning, I trekked down, trekked down to his cabin on snowshoes. He was busy. European and Oriental stations were coming through with some degree of clarity. I waited outside while he listened, while listened in, while he listened in. I didn't wish to disturb him. Later, he typed out an analysis of the conversations and broadcasts he had heard. He mailed copies of them out that afternoon to various United States government agencies. I went inside and he told me his dog was better and that he believed he could save its life, although it would lose his leg. I was tired from my trip on the snowshoes after staying up late the night before, and I was amazed at Wagner's apparent freshness in spite of his own late hours and that added fact that he had been up since long before the dawn. He still wore the faded flannel shirt and the jod hoppers and boots, and his revolver lay on his writing desk in front of him. He seemed calm enough, but I thought I again detected that strange tenseness and alertness in his actions. Ah, I'm wondering when he's going to get shot. He made, a he made me comfortable and then slouched in a chair in front of the fire, and again he started talking. I can skip a long period of time in here, a period with the exception of occasional programs from abroad, a great deal of my information came out of newspapers. There was gradual sinister increase in propaganda programs. And then in 1939 came Hitler's famous shortwave broadcast to England and the Americas. That's when he said, if the Allies don't discontinue pouring their propaganda into Germany, I will flood the world with my own brand of propaganda. True Magazine. July 1941, we're at the end, and we'll start at the last paragraph before we stopped. And then in 1939 came Hitler's famous short wave broadcast to England and the Americas. That's when he said, if the Allies don't discontinue pouring their propaganda into Germany, I will flood the world with my own brand of propaganda. And now we're talking, Siegfried's talking. I understood what was in the back of that statement. I had already been, had been, hearing the infamous Lord Ha Ha speeches. I knew Hitler was merely justifying his own type of warfare. I knew this gangster of the airwaves, the German sympathizer, fasc fascist blackmailer Ha Ha, was none other than William Joyce, one time first lieutenant to the traitor Sir Oswald Mosley. I determined to listen more closely than ever, and I have also determined that the United States should have full reports on what I have heard. I discovered and developed a particularly effective tool and one highly essential in a conflict more tightly censored than any before. Any ever before. The correct interpretations of the government propaganda and propaganda machines is frequently more important than the actual spot news of any mo army movement at all. Because they're telling you what's going to happen before it happens. If you can understand what they're saying behind the lines. The correct interpretations of government propaganda and propaganda machines is frequently more important than the actual spot news of any army movement. It is, of course, true that a vast, excellent chance of doing a splendid job of reporting and themselves are fully capable of making deductions from the propaganda handed out by official sources or releases. Just by listening to the what they tell you, you can read through the lines and figure out what's going on. Especially in, on the internet today. It is, of course, true that all propaganda which comes out of Europe via shortwave is designed for an obvious effect on the more than half million listeners in America. But all too often the truth is unwittingly revealed. It was after World War II started that I first began having real trouble and first began suffering endless persecution from foreign agents. Listening closely to American as well as other broadcasts, I discovered that on a station in Hammond, Indiana, there originated a program of propaganda called Free America Broadcast and sponsored by the German-American Unity Front. The program was vile in its denunciation of the Jewish capitalist clique, the money changers, and went on, or some people call them the Kenites. And that's just such a biz Look at Jekyll Island and see how many are Kenites and how many are not. 
that's the beginning of the money click. But to say that it's all about the people with the money is wrong. The program was violent its denunciation of the Jewish capitalist clique and went on and went in for similar un-Americanisms. I at once reported this to the FBI and the FCC. The reaction was immediate. Paul A. Worf Worfowitz, who incidentally is still active in circles from which comes thinly disguised foreign propaganda, called me a loudmouth skunk and an agent of international moneylenders. Makes sense, right? But within days, the station was forced to drop the program. At once, I began to receive threats. There began a series of threatening telephone calls. My wife also received these calls. Each time I answered the phone, the first word would be, Is this the Jew Wagner? Sometimes it would be, Is this the Dirty Jew Lucas? A name under which I frequently wrote. There would, be a follow, there would follow a blast of vile epithets. I realized I needed every possible protection. I decided they weren't just playing games with me. Evidently, I had become a dangerous enemy of the Third Reich and its representatives in this country, and it was then that I decided I would need not only the protection of the FBI, but also a personal bodyguard as well. I, had already, I already could handle modern rifles and revolvers, and as a result of my experiences in the German army, I obtained several high-powered guns and plenty of ammunition. Frequently, I would pass the world-famous San Malo Cathedral. Wow, that's right by my grandma's property. Frequently, I would pass the world-famous San Malo Cathedral, the amazingly beautiful stone that had amazingly, amazingly beautiful stone edifice under the care of Monsignor Bossetti, which is lost in the far reaches of the Rockies and is not more than a couple miles from my listening post. That's what I said. I would stop for a moment of silent prayer, and it was in an inspiring guide to me during many dark hours. Wow. I just saw it the other day. It's a really nice Catholic church. Although I could keep a couple of horses on my place, I found it necessary to have a fast car as well. I must be prepared to move swiftly at all times. Wagner had been sitting in front of a powerful RME-70 11 tube communications receiver, which he uses for especially difficult reception. The Lend-Lease bill had just been passed, and the reception was poor. He was using earphones instead of the usual loudspeaker. It is fortunate to have the micronic, micrometric tuning as well as an additional crystal phasing, he said, for I have just cut in on DL, DJL Berlin. The Germans are wild and worried, but they are trying to cover it up with attacks on Roosevelt. As soon as I hear what Tokyo and Rome have to say, I will have a fair analysis. And although NBC and CNS both have listening stations, they will be unable to make the same deductions that I make. You see, they concentrate on the news only. I not only get the best reception in the world, but I was once German and I understand the psychology of the German. As I write this, it's very cold up here, something under 10 below zero. The bodyguard, Kulhin, has just come in with the news that another dog has been shot. That makes two of them within a week. He will report it to the FBI in Denver tonight. But in the meantime, the Moscow station is coming in and Wagner wants to catch what they have to say. His first job is listening in, a new way of fighting for freedom. The work I am doing, he says, it invites murder but I am prepared. Amen.